Hello there. This is the family doctor. an actor? Oh, I don't know, Pete. I think you're a pretty good actor. You're undoubtedly Cedarton's most successful practical joker, and that takes real histrionic ability. Uh, it takes what? Histrionic ability. That means the, the ability to act. Oh, yeah, I say. But gollies, Doc, I'm scared to death. I get goose pimples all over when I think of trying to get up there on that platform in front of the whole town and recite and speeches. And, and look at them. They're, they're miles long. I ain't never going to be able to learn them. Whoopee, hot dog. Hey, 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 chick, what's the idea? This is a respectable drugstore. Oh, excuse me, Mr. May, but I was just so happy, I guess I couldn't help letting off a little steam. Well, what's the occasion, chick? What's happened to incite this effervescent display of enthusiasm? Huh? Well, well, if you mean, why am I happy, it's this. Mrs. O'Malley has just given me a part in a pageant. She has? Well, that's great. Then that settles it. What do you mean, mm -hmm. Pete? Yes, that settles the whole thing. Chick, you don't know how glad I am you got that part. Well, thanks, Mr. May. What's that got to do with it, Pete? Well, don't you see, Doc? That means that I'll have to stay here in the store. Both Chick and me can't go away at the same time. I can't go away and lock up the store. Fiddlesticks. Of course you can lock up the store. But, Doc... Because the whole town will be attending the first annual Cedarton Festival and historical pageant. That's why. There won't be anybody loose on the streets to buy anything in your store. So you can just lock up and do that part that Mrs. O'Malley gave you to do. Oh, gollies, Doc. I'm going to lose ten years off my life because of this. Why did I ever let her talk me into it? She's just like all women, meddling around in other people's business and making them unhappy. Uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Uh, May. Uh, oh, I... Uh, excuse me, Miss O'Malley, I didn't mean anything. I... Mr. May, I'll have you understand that I'm directing this pageant because I was requested to do so by your worthy editor, Mr. Amos Day. He, with rare foresight, has sponsored this festival and pageant, and I agree with him that it's going to do wonders for Cedarton. Don't you think so, Dr. Adams? Well, yes, yes, I do. I think it's a great thing. Thank you. But if Mr. May believes that it will be best that he refuse the request of the committee that he play that part, well, then, of course, I, I can do nothing else but carry his decision to the committee. Oh, now, now, listen, Mrs. O'Malley. I didn't mean nothing like that. No, no, I'll do the part all right. It's only that I ain't never done nothing like it before. Well, and... there could always be a first time for anything. Uh, uh, like eating an olive. Yes, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, Pete, I guess that settles that once and for all. It would appear that you're going to take part in the first annual Cedarton Festival and historical pageant. Yes, Doc, that's the way it appears. Now, uh, Dr. Adams, now that Mr. May is settled, I want to talk to you. Hmm? To me? Go ahead, Mrs. O'Malley. Have you got a part for Doc, too? Yes, I have. What? Oh, now, now, please, Mrs. O'Malley, I... Uh... Oh, I see. <laughs> You're just joking. I'm nothing of the kind. I'm not joking at all. I'm perfectly serious. I want you to act as master of ceremony. That's fine, Mrs. O'Malley. There ain't anybody in town that could do a better job than Doc Adams. <laughs> hey, Tasha. Now, Mrs. O'Malley, I certainly would like to do a part in your pageant for you. It isn't my pageant, Dr. Adams. This pageant and festival belongs to Cedarton. 
And you, as one of the oldest and best-known citizens of our fair city, should consider it not only a pleasure, but an honorable duty to perform your part. <clears throat> yes, yes, of course, but there's just one phase to it that bothers me a little. And that is? My practice. I have to consider my patients. There, there might be an emergency case come up suddenly and... If there is an emergency, Doctor, it will happen right in the audience or on the stage because the entire city's population will be in attendance. <laughs> Mr. May, what in the world is amusing you? Well, that's exactly what Doc just got through saying to me. Oh, I understand. <clears throat> well, uh, yes, yes, I can see your point of view, Mrs. O'Malley. As a matter of fact, I'll be very glad to do this part for you and Cedarton, just so as I can be there back at the scenes watching Pete May. <laughs> yes. Well, what I have for you to do is quite simple. Well, I'm glad of that. Uh, what's that? I, I say it'll be fun to act. Mm. Well, what you have to do isn't really acting, you see. I just want you to introduce each act as it comes on. The combined Cedarton Union High School Glee Clubs will offer several vocal numbers, of course, and then there'll be the various actors who are portraying the parts in the pageant. It won't be necessary for you to attend any rehearsals until the dress. Very well. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. O'Malley. Yes, Jake? Uh, have you got my part for me? I mean, if you could give it to me, I could be learning my speeches, kind of... Oh, Jake, I'd quite forgotten. Uh, let me see. I've got here in my briefcase. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> there you are. Gee, thanks. Well, that's quite all right. I'm glad you mended it. I'm always happy to see people interested in the drama. Um... Oh, say, Mrs. O'Malley. Yes, what is it? Uh, I guess you, uh... Well, I guess you must have made a mistake. Mistake? Why? Well, uh, I don't think this is my part. Oh, let me see. The spirit of courage. Oh, yes, of course, that's your part. Uh, what makes you think it isn't? Well, gee, uh, well, well, is this my picture here on the front? Mm, oh, yes, yes. That is the costume you are to wear. But, uh, uh, this guy's wearing a skirt. Huh? Skirt? Let me see it. That is not a skirt, young man. That is the costume worn by the brave young lads of Sparta. And it precisely fits the part you're to portray. Oh. The spirit of courage. I'll say it does. <laughs> if Chick wears that outfit, he'll be the bravest young lad in Dunlap County. <laughs> Pete, hush up. <laughs> uh, uh, sure thing, Doc. Yes. You are to come running onto the stage, Chick. Just like the young soldier, Phidippides, who ran from Marathon to Athens and then fell dead. Well, in front of all those people, I'll fall dead all right. You'll do nothing of the sort. You'll run onto the stage and up before the throne of Queen Maybell and deliver your speech. And then you'll collapse at her feet exhausted, but triumphant in death, glorious in the courage that spurred you on to victory. Uh, pardon me. Yes, Doctor. Isn't the Queen's name Mabel? Mabel Graham? Oh, yes, yes, it was Mabel. But uh, for the artistic purposes of our pageant, we've called her Maybell. Oh, yes, I see. Uh, then you, Mr. May. Yeah? You will come riding forth upon a beautiful white charger. On a beautiful white what? A charger. A powerful snow-white Percheron. A horse. Me? On a horse? Why, I ain't never rid a horse in my life. Nevertheless, you ride one in this pageant. As I said, there can always be a first time. Oh, yeah, sure. I say what you mean. And you'll ride forth to the throne of Queen Maybell and deliver your speech as the spirit of progress. Progress? Oh, yeah, sure. And it's one of the most beautiful speeches in the entire pageant. Frank has done a lovely artistic and dramatic piece of work in the speech. Frank? Yes, uh, Frank O'Malley, my husband. Oh, yes, of oh, course. Uh, then, uh, Mr. May, you will take your place beside the throne of the Queen, after which Frank, in the character of the Spirit of Light, will leap from a promontory ten feet high onto the stage and fling wide the portals, which will reveal the combined glee clubs of the high school. They then will sing the new Cedarton anthem I've written, bringing the entire production to a smashing climax amid a blaze of light and glory. Oh, dear. Well... That certainly sounds marvelous, Mrs. O'Malley. Thank you. You, uh, you don't think it's just a little too pretentious for the folks of Cedarton to attempt, do you? Pretentious? Why, of course not. Don't forget, Doctor, I am directing. Oh, to be sure, of course. Uh, now, uh, Mr. May, I'd like to run over your speech a bit, if you don't mind. Huh? Right here, now? Why, of course, right here and now. I'm going over the entire production with all the cast this afternoon individually so that we shan't waste any time in rehearsal tonight. <laughs> After all, the pageant is just a short time away. Oh, uh, uh, Of course, you haven't memorized it, but if you'll just read it... Oh, well, okie dokie. <clears throat> Behold, good people of Cedarton and beauteous Queen Mabel... Uh, Maybell, Mr. May. Yeah. Maybell. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. And uh, beauteous Queen Maybell... I come bringing you tidings of joy. 
I am the spirit of progress, and I give you the ad- uh, ad- admonition. Admonition. Uh, to carry onward toward your goal of act. Uh, achievement. Yeah, achievement. Oh, oh sure. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that word in print before. Mm, uh, very well, Mr. Mayor, but please proceed. Well, now let me see. Oh, here. Toward your goal of achievement, as our forefathers have done before us, and as we expect our children... Of course, I ain't got any children, you know. I'm a bachelor. Never mind, Mr. May. The committee will provide you with children if it is deemed necessary. Oh, that's nice. Well, now... Let me say, as we expect our children to do after us. Now to thee, O oh most homely queen. What? Comely. <laughs> the word is comely. Comely meaning beautiful, pleasant to look at. Well, I've never heard of that word. Uh, you'll pardon me, Mr. May. Yes, what'd you do? I, uh, I don't believe you have a very large vocabulary, have you? Oh, I don't know. I got quite a big stock of drugs back there. Oh, it's... not laboratory vocabulary. Oh, yes. Uh, but Mr. May. Yeah? I wonder... I wonder if you'd think me presumptive if I suggested that, uh, that, well, that we might have to find someone else with a little more experience oh, to do this part. say, would you? That's well, Mrs. O'Malley. I know I ain't any actor, and I wouldn't want to do nothing to spoil this pageant. It's perfectly okie dokie with me. <laughs> say, Mrs. O'Malley, here's your man, Chief of Police Benson. Well, afternoon, everybody. Well, Mrs. O.M., how is the festival and pageant coming along? Uh, oh, Chief Benson, you're just the man I want to see. Oh, yes, well, we aim to please, the fellow says. Chief Benson, <laughs> I want you to do a part in the pageant. Me? Why, and Mrs. O.M., yes, sir, man and boy, I've been a play acting for about 40 years. What can I do for you? Well, uh, there, there, there's another thing. Can you ride a horse? Can I ride a horse? Me, that was the champion Bronco Buster, the Q Bar Z Rancho? <laughs> I should say I can ride a horse. Oh, well, that's just <laughs> fine. Uh, would you care to go to our studio and run over the part right now? Why, say, I'd be delighted. Why, no sooner said than done, as the fellow says. Well, <laughs> come along. Oh, I just think you're going to be wonderful in the party. Well, so well. <laughs> I reckon I got rid of that all right. Yes, you got rid of it, Pete May. But what about me? Yeah, me wearing a skirt. Oh, gee. Well, I'll tell you, fellas. While you're up there on that there platform doing your parts, I'll be sitting down here in my nice quiet store, a reading a good mystery story and a listening to the radio. Good luck, boys. Oh, you're <laughs> gonna <laughs> jump right. <laughs> This is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. <laughs>